When you first learn about capital budgeting techniques such as net present value or internal rate of return, you're generally given the cash flows. And we do this to make it easier so you can concentrate on learning the technique of net present value or internal rate of return. The next step in the process is learning how to estimate those cash flows. Now, you may recall that you can get different cash flows like operating cash flow by looking at the income statement of a company. Now, one thing we like to do is create a pro forma income statement or a forecasted income statement. And this income statement could be for the company as a whole, but in most cases we're interested in producing a pro forma income statement for the project. So if we undertake a new project, what are the cash flows going to be? Or what are, what are the revenues going to be? What are the costs going to be? What are the profits going to be? So, and we call this a, a pro forma income statement. And here's how we can construct it. Okay, there are a lot of ways to construct it. But one method is what we refer to as the percentage of sales method. And we're gonna, going to assume is that many of the important variables, such as cost of goods sold, are going to be a percentage of sales. That is, that they don't change very much. So, in fact, let's take a look at, um, here I've gone to Morningstar.com, and I've typed in Dell, and if you scroll down, if you look at key ratios and you hit profitability, they have things that are percentage of sales. Okay, Revenues, of course, are sales revenue, so that's 100%. So everything's divided by sales. Notice that cost of goods sold, COGS, is fairly consistent in terms of its percentage of sales, 82%, 81.78, 81.68, etc. Okay, um, it does fall off in 2012. Now, there's two possibilities here. Perhaps their cost of goods sold went down because they found a more efficient way or a less expensive way to produce their computers. Or perhaps Dell is moving into a different line of business. Some of you may be familiar with the computer company IBM. IBM built its reputation on building large mainframe computers. They were a computer company. Then later on, they had a very successful personal computer, the IBM PC. But lately, they've moved into the consulting business. Okay, that's they've actually reinvented themselves as the computer business, the, the especially the PC business was not becoming very profitable. It was becoming quite quite a commodity. Okay, a lot of companies make these computers. They're all basically the same. So they got out of that line of business. They don't even make personal computers anymore. They sold their um, their personal computer business to Lenovo, which is a Chinese company. You may have noticed if you've watched TV at all, they run a lot of commercials where they talk about being IBMers, where they talk about building a smarter planet, that you know food is being wasted and you know our logistics, we can figure out how to stop that from happening or how we can help with, with uh, traffic congestion. And what are they doing? They're selling consulting business. And the consulting business is going to have a lower cost of goods sold. You don't need raw materials to do consulting. So it may be here that Dell has shifted its focus away from building personal computers to more of a consulting business. So that may be one reason that their cost of goods sold has, has gone down. But for a company that has not changed what they're doing, Cost of goods sold, okay, and most of these percentages are pretty consistent. Sales and general administrative expenses, okay, 8.61, 8.55, 8.33. Okay, you see it going up here, and again, I'm not sure why, but that's something that could be, that would be interesting to investigate if you were going to analyze Dell as a possible investment. Perhaps these are going up because they are shifting lines of business and they're spending more on advertising to make consumers aware of the new lines of business they're in. 
if you look at their R&D, um, hovers around 1%, okay, went down a little bit here, okay, perhaps because of the recession, okay, back around 1%, up a little bit here. So, you know, again, pretty consistent. So if we go back to our spreadsheet, what do we do? We try and create this pro, pro forma income statement by putting the relevant variables, the things we're going to change in the, I put them in the left-hand column here, these two left-hand columns, and then I essentially set up an income statement down here. Sales revenue, minus cost of goods sold, minus sales and general administrative expenses, depreciation, et cetera, so that I can create so that I can find out what net profit or net income is. And so how do we create that? Well, the reason we like the sales percentage of sales method is sales are much more straightforward to forecast. You know, if you think about a company like Ford, they probably have a pretty good idea of how many cars they will sell in a year. Now, a recession could hit in the middle of the year or something something could happen that could change that forecast, but they probably do a pretty good job. They've hired economists to forecast these things. These economists would look at things like, you know, how many cars were sold last year. People who haven't bought a car in many, many years are likely to need to replace their car. Um, uh, as I'm doing this, this video, uh, the East Coast was hit by Hurricane Sandy. Many people's automobiles were damaged, so that would bump up the demand. But in normal years, you can probably project automobile sales based on how many cars were sold last year and the year before that and the year before that, because people will replace their cars. You can look at how the economy is doing. If uh, the economy is growing well, then people will be buying and replacing cars. If the economy is sluggish, um, car sales will probably lag. But still, it's probably much more straightforward to forecast. You can also look at interest rates for financing cars. So you try and come up with some sort of forecast of sales. And you may want to put in a growth rate so that sales will be growing over a number of periods. So, you know, if we happen to be doing this for Dell, since I looked at Dell's uh, financial statement, perhaps they're introducing a new computer. They believe that they're going to sell a million units in the first year. We'll put in a formula for their sales growth rate. I haven't incorporated it in yet because I put it in a zero. They're going to sell this computer for $400. We have cost of goods sold here as 81%, sales and general administrative expenses at 9%, and a, f a fixed depreciation, a straight line depreciation method of $10 million. Now we can modify that to use some of the more complicated methods such as the MACRS Modified Accelerated Capital Recovery System. It's a depreciation method that the government allows that allows companies to accelerate their depreciation, to, to write off more of the costs early um, in the life of that capital expenditure okay, to get some of their money back faster. Um, and we'll we'll talk about that more in a different tutorial. But here, let's just set this thing up. What are sales revenue? Revenues are going to be sales times price. Price times quantity, that equals revenue. We can also incorporate a growth rate, and that's what I've done here. So if you if I just wanted price times quantity, I'd have B6 which is quantity times price, which is B8. But I want to incorporate a growth rate, and so I have 1 plus B7, 1 plus the growth rate, and I'm going to raise it to a power. I want to raise it to the zero power here, because in the first year it's not going to grow. I want to raise it to the second power, I'm sorry, to the first power here, to the thir second power here, third power, fourth power. Notice what I've done. I'm raising it to a power that's one year to the what year it is in the project minus one and that's what I've done here I've said let's look at what's in C12 that's the number one and I've subtracted one and I raise it 
to, I'm sorry, I don't raise it to eight, that's the power I'm raising it to, and then I multiply it all of this times the price. So I've got, let me do that again, I've got uh, quantity sold times one plus the growth rate raised to the whatever year it is, minus one. And you can see the way I put it in, if I move to this cell here, now it's D12, so it's going to take two and subtract one. And there are other ways you could create this spreadsheet as well. This is the way I did it. And you'll notice that if I change the growth rate of sales, there's a zero growth rate, so sales is the same every year, which means the cost of goods sold is the same every year because that's 81% of uh, sales. And SGA, sales and general administrative expenses are the same. Suppose I change this to 5%, so the growth, we get a 5% growth rate. What do you see? You see now revenues have gone up by 5%. Cost of goods sold are now higher than they were before. Okay, In year three, they're going to be 5% higher than they were in year two. You can see that net profit is changing. Right, It's going up because every year we're selling 5% more. So if you use something like this, uh, a pro forma income statement, and you do it on the spreadsheet, it's a very powerful way to calculate net profits. It's also a great way to do some sensitivity analysis. We can look and we can see, well, how does net profit or net income change if cost of goods sold change? Suppose cost of goods sold go up to 84%. That doesn't sound like a big deal, but boy, that changes net profit quite a bit. Okay, let's go back to the original 81%. You saw that it was 19,500,000. When we went up to 84%, it came down quite a bit. It came down to 11,700,000. So you can see how sensitive profits are to cost of goods sold. That's why companies work so hard to try and keep costs down. So this is one of the, the, uh, the tools that we'll need in order to evaluate a project. And in coming tutorials, we'll take this a step further. We'll calculate uh, cash flows, and then we'll calculate net present value, internal rate of return, etc.